Good morning. I'm going to take just a moment just to pause. I feel like we're moving fast, so I want to take a moment just to, to breathe and, and just to say, God, we are here. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for all the awesome things you do. We thank you for showing up in this service. And we thank you for the ways in which you unite us. And we thank you, Lord, for the many ways in which you speak to all of us in very unique ways. May the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The sermonic theme for today is just for you. Just for you. Kobe Bryant is most known for his talent on the basketball court playing for the LA Lakers. He spent his entire professional basketball career <clears throat> with the LA Lakers, winning five national championships. This guy was so good, he was the sixth player who went straight from high school to the NBA. Some have described him as an all-around good player. Actually, I learned from Maurice Pennington, Kobe influenced millions, including him to incorporate a mindset of always working hard and improving themselves every day. This is famously known as the Mamba mentality. Kobe remains one of the all-time leading scorers in the NBA with a total of 33,463 career points. Kobe retired at 37 years old, finishing up his career in 2015-2016. Like many people, Kobe was more than just a professional basketball player. Sometimes people are more than just what we see, what meets the eye on any given day. In his retirement days, he made up for his missed time with his family. Gianna, one of his daughters, took to the game and she took to her father. They would travel, she traveling with him to work, and he helped her coaching her team. He said of her, it's a trip to see her move and some of her expressions she makes. What I love about Gigi is her curiosity about the game. She's very curious, even in heated situations. In a game where it goes back and forth, she can detach herself and come to me and ask a very specific question, which is not common. Some of you know this story. You know the ending of this story. On January 26, 2020, they were traveling to one of Gigi's games. Because of the LA traffic, Kobe decided to take a helicopter it was much easier and faster just to take a helicopter up in the air. It was later determined that the pilot that drove that day made a series of poor decisions. We hear it was cloudy, but he got up in a wall of clouds he couldn't see anyway. He became disoriented, and so when he thought he was climbing upward, upward, he was actually diving downward. All seven people on board of the train were killed. News of this tragic event was shared by TMZ with the world, and folks all over the world knew about the death and all of the victims before they could even alert all of the family members. In the world of news and social media, imagine the world knowing about your family member plummeting to death before you know. Is there anything anymore that's just for you? Is there anything anymore that's sacred, personal, private, that's just for you. This is where we enter the biblical text today. Today is the day that we're focusing on Transfiguration Sunday. That's what we call it. The text, this text always precedes Lent. It always precedes Ash Wednesday. This story is at the forefront in Mark, Jesus' journey toward Jerusalem, where he will be rejected, killed, and raised. But first, the disciples with Jesus are bedazzled and dumbfounded by what they see next. They have been led up on a mountain high, and right before their eyes, Jesus changes. Jesus' clothes 
began to shine white. And then Elias and Moses appeared, and they were having a conversation with Jesus. Imagine the folks you love that have gone on to become ancestors coming back and having an intimate conversation with you. Jesus, Elias, and Moses are having a pretty long conversation, and Peter does that thing we do when we don't know quite what to do. He puts his foot in his mouth. Glad we're here. Do you want me to set up a tent for all three of you? In awkward moments, sometimes we say inappropriate stuff when we might have done better like the other disciples just to remain quiet. But whereas fear pushes some to speak, fear pushes others to be silent. I imagine the disciples may have had a few unrecorded words amongst themselves. Are you seeing? Are you? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Too much is happening, and now we add sound. Like the Kobe crew, they found a cloud amongst them, and a voice came from the cloud. And the voice says, this is my son. Listen to him. And then everything was back to normal, except it was anything but normal. You know when you've been somewhere, and you come back, and like, wow. And then Jesus gives them this order. Keep what you saw to yourself. This is just for you. Just, just for you. Some things are just for you. By that, I mean the experience, the message is just for you. I've shared this story so many times, you all could tell it for me, but it bears repeating again of Brian Stevenson and his grandmother. One day, she eyeballs him real good. He's 10 years old. He thought it was a game until she said, you, you come here. I'm going to tell you something, but you don't you tell nobody. I want you to know I've been watching you. His grandmother says, I think you're special. I think you can do anything you want to do. And she told him, I'm not going to be here forever, so I need you to promise me just three things. He says, okay, Grandma, what are they? First, one, that you'll always love your mom. That's my baby girl. He said, okay, I think I got this. The second thing is that you will always do the right thing, even when the hard thing is the right thing. And third, that you will never drink alcohol. At 10 years old, he found himself agreeing to it all. Now, I've shared with you that he learned years later that his grandma had the same conversation with all of her grandkids. But when she got along with Brian, Brian, she made him believe that it was personal, that it was just for him. It was a message for him. He received it. He treated his mom well. He became a lawyer. And if that isn't doing everything right, he's never drank to this day just for you. Some things are just for you. Some messages are just for you. Some things just happen to us, and we don't have words either. Sometimes there's a mystery, and we don't have words to describe what's going on. Something we cannot quite explain, but Jesus squeezes us tight like Brian's grandmother. Jesus shows us like Kobe for his daughter game. Or we witness something so grand that there are absolutely no words to describe what we have seen. You ever been on a trip and you try to take a picture of what you see, and when you get the picture, it just doesn't. It cannot capture what you see because it was just, just for you. I remember when I just given my life to the Lord, I was at a retreat center in the mountains, and it had been raining. There were clouds and dew. But just like that, I could feel God's presence so close. I was all by myself, surrounded, surrounded by God's glory. And I knew in that instant that God's love for me was so real. I could feel it. It was so powerful. It swallowed me up, and I found tears falling down my face just for me, just for you. Even as big as the planet is and with all the inhabitants in it, there are still some things united that are just, just for you. Just for you. Just for you, Silarine. Just for you, Danielle. Just for you. Just for you. There are so many encounters in the gospel where Jesus gives people a unique experience Some he tells to keep it to themselves, just just for you. It's really just for them. And they had been on the mountain and seen what they had seen. We got the written version, but they, the disciples, were there. They saw it with their own eyes and witnessed it. 
and felt this wonderful moment in their body. Before the journey of Lent, here is Jesus being raised up. And on their way back down, he says to them, it's not by accident that you saw this. It's just, just for you. How many of y'all believe that some things are just, just for you? This journey that we are on with Jesus, this Lent journey that we are about to begin on Thursday of this week, I encourage you to think of adding something to your plate or taking something off to connect with Jesus. It's one thing to hear Lent. We hear it everywhere, every year, but if you can do something, it helps you to connect more on this Lent journey. A girl had leukemia in another church, and she was facing chemotherapy. And the pastor of the church said, I need 10 people to give up sugar to take this journey with this girl. One of those persons felt a just-for-me tug, tried to shake it off. She loved candy and sugar, and her body showed it. They had gotten nine volunteers, and now there was that pause, you know, that awkward pause, like who's going to raise their hand? Who's going to take this journey? Everyone in the church knew what this commitment meant. And just like that, her hand went up. She says she had major withdrawal symptoms. What had she done to her body? She cleaned out her drawers at work and at home, and when the girl had come through chemo, the woman had felt connected with the leukemia journey. It's the giving up of candy that had made the journey more real for her. As we journey through Lent this week for 40 days, give up or add, but find a way to connect with Jesus' journey to Jerusalem. Don't miss the opportunity back to just for you. As we conclude, keep in mind that some things are just for you. Sometimes when somebody tells you something, you don't have to go back and tell everybody else because it's just just for you. These friends went out to dinner. It was one friend's birthday. They picked a new restaurant and made reservations. The day had been regular, except it was this friend's birthday, and they tried to make it special for her. They had signed up, made reservations, got their table. They sat down. They reminisced about the good old days. You know, as you get older and you journey with people, sometimes you look back on the good old days. They ordered their food, and the owner of this new restaurant shows up at their table. And before long, they enter a conversation that makes them all feel like family. You know how you meet a stranger sometime, and it feels like you've known that person for weeks? The owner orders them more food and brings out his special sauce recipe because he wants their feedback. He shares his vision for this restaurant, and the ladies are just listening. They take pictures with this former NFL retired celebrity football player. People would know, so they want to get this picture down. It might be worth something later. But the friend at the end of the evening reaches out to her other friends and said, I would prefer not to post it. I would prefer not to share this with other people. This was indeed a special night. Thank you for making my birthday special. But I would like to keep this just for us. Just for you. Sometimes it's just for you. Amen.